real impact today at LLS.org. This morning on CBS2 News, vigils held overnight honoring lives lost to gun violence. A look at the events here in Idaho and across the nation. Plus, investigators need your help as they look into the Moscow murders, what they want you to keep an eye out for. Plus, Idaho's largest toy drive is over, folks. A look at the results and a big thank you from us here at CBS2. CBS2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise. It is Thursday, December 8th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And so nice to have a clear mm -hmm. view of downtown Boise again this morning. Yeah, much of that expected fog mo moved out of the region. And now we're seeing some fog over in Magic Valley. But here in the Treasure Valley, we're not seeing any fog this morning. Really clearing up that morning commute. And today we're going to have a calm before the storm. Mo Mostly cloudy skies expected today, or excuse me, partly cloudy skies expected today. Right now, we are seeing some clouds over our region right now. And today, we are seeing some colder temperatures this morning as well. Temperatures in the low 20s for much of this morning, 21 degrees expected at 6 a.m. That'll jump up to 22 degrees around 7 a.m. And 22 degrees is also expected at 8 a.m. Now, for today, we're going to jump to 23 degrees around 9 a.m. We'll jump up to 29 around 12 p.m. So we aren't going to see the 30s at all this this morning we'll jump up to 34 to 35 degrees as our high today around 3 p.m. and then we'll drop back down to 31 degrees at 6 p.m. but the big story is tomorrow we are going to see some snow here in the Treasure Valley and in the West Central Mountains that triggered a winter weather advisory that's set to start around 5 p.m. today and it will last till 11 a.m. on Friday we expect about one to three inches of snowfall here in the Treasure Valley and three to five inches of snowfall over in the Central Mountains taking a look at temperatures 35 degrees in Boise, 32 in Emmett, and 34 in Caldwell, 35 expected in Nampa, and 36 in Mountain Home. Over in Ontario, 29 degrees expected there, and then up in the mountains, 26 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long, and as we start the 5 o'clock hour today, everything looking smooth out there. You can see traffic moving along smoothly, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car this morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Vigils are being held across the nation overnight for victims of gun violence. Our own Michaela Elich takes a local look at this growing movement. People lit up the night sky holding candles and honoring all those affected by gun violence. This was the first time the Boise vigil was ever led by all survivors. One of them being Andrew Rose. Immediately, it just shattered our our uh, our whole world. Um, it was just it was traumatizing in a way that is is hard to explain if you haven't lived it. Andrew lost his brother nearly nine years ago. Yeah, a lot of good memories from this trip. Now he hopes to share his brother's story. Instead, I put it under a light, and I looked at it, and I acknowledged the grief, and I embraced it. Um, and ever since then, I've been embracing my grief by, by telling my story and Ben's story to whoever will listen, basically. Whether it be survivors, victims, family members, or just those that want to show their support, the event hopes to bring everyone together. A lot of people think you had to have been shot, and it's not that at all. It can be someone who ran and hid for their life. They've been threatened with a gun. Um, they knew someone they loved and cared for was shot and killed or took their life. That makes you a survivor of gun violence. So we want to reach out to people and let them know they're not alone. There are people here in the community. We care and they have access to help. Now, if you or someone you know is a survivor of gun violence, there are local resources available. All you have to do is text the word survivor to the number on your screen. That's 644 and the nation's capital also holding a vigil for victims of gun violence. The event organized by the Newtown Action Alliance memorializing the Sandy Hook shooting. The president attending the vigil. There, he renewed his call for Congress to pass stricter gun reform. Now, earlier this year, Congress did pass the most significant firearm reforms in nearly three decades after the massacres in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. 
Now, these moves enhance background checks, they boost school security, and develop red flag laws, among other measures. Lawmakers acknowledging, though, most restrictions are unlikely in the near future, with Republicans about to take control of the House while Democrats retain the majority of the Senate. Well, now to the latest out of Moscow. Investigators looking for a white Hyundai Elantra made between 2011 and 2013. Now, they say the car was in the immediate area of the home where four college students were killed last month, and they want to speak to its occupants who may have critical information about the case. However, officials don't know the vehicle's specific license plate number. If you do know anything, you can call or email the tip line. We have both of those for you on our website. That's IdahoNews.com. And turning to developing news, at least two more classified documents have been found in the possession of former President Donald Trump. His lawyers say they discovered the material while searching a storage unit in West Palm Beach, Florida, after a federal judge pressed the Trump legal team to ensure all documents had been handed over to the FBI. The Washington Post reports that no classified material was found in additional searches of Trump Tower in New York and his golf club in New Jersey. Stay tuned, we'll take a closer look at the search for classified documents taken from the White Houses. For the latest, you can always head to IdahoNews.com. And Apple announcing plans to encrypt more data from users stored on the iCloud servers, including full backups, photos, and notes. Security advocates welcome the move, but law enforcement agencies worry they could run into more issues when it comes to unlocking devices for investigations. In a statement, the FBI says measures hinder their ability to protect Americans from crimes ranging from cyber attacks to violence against children and terrorism. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union. Big O Tires and Bronco Motors. Idaho's largest toy drive, it's over. And the final numbers showing just how amazing our community is. We want to thank everyone involved here at CBS2 News and KBOI, as well as our other media partners. Now in all, you, the community, donated 15,000 toys, filling more than four semi-trailers. You also donated more than $45,000. We truly can't thank you enough for helping us to give every child in the Treasure Valley a gift this holiday season. And hey, if you want to give someone a smile this holiday, here's another way you can do that. The Meridian Senior Center, they're asking for Christmas cards from children. They'll be given to seniors next week during their holiday lunch. Cards, they can be dropped off at the Meridian Senior Center. That's 1920 North Records Way. That's the southeast corner of Kleiner Park. Now the Senior Center hoping to collect all of those cards by Monday. I love it. Lots of ways to spread mm -hmm. cheer this year. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And I enjoy that. Feeling a little mm -hmm. cheer cheerier too mm -hmm. because we finally can see the sky. It yes. looks like, yeah, that fog, at least that mm -hmm. low clouds inversion has moved out, but it is cold out there this morning. Yeah. The one thing I forgot with the inversion is that we don't have winds mm -hmm. and that wind is biting, folks. Yeah, yeah. that wind is definitely yeah. biting. Temperatures dropping into the low 20s this morning and we're going to stay in the 20s throughout the morning here in the Treasure Valley. Now, when you head out the door this morning, you'll notice those cold temperatures. 24 degrees expected at 9 a.m. Actually, 23 degrees now. Temperatures have just dropped. 27 degrees expected at 11 a.m., leading to our high today of 35 degrees around 3 p.m. And we're going to see partly cloudy skies for much of the day today. Take a look at this clearing, though. Yesterday, we saw many low clouds covering the area. We couldn't see any of the city lights. Now it's starting to clear up, and that's why we're not seeing really any fog outside right now. But take a look at these low temperatures. 21 in Boise right now, 20 in Mountain home 26 in Nampa and 27 right now in Caldwell 25 degrees over in Ontario this morning and 7 degrees this morning over in Sun Valley. Now the chances of precipitation we are going to see a lot of precipitation over this weekend. It will begin on Thursday night and into Friday morning. That's where we're going to see a lot of snowfall here in the Treasure Valley about one to three inches is expected on Friday morning and that's what triggered that winter weather advisory and then Saturday and Sunday we will see about another one to two inches of snowfall here here in the Treasure Valley in total, and it's going to be more of a rain snow mix on Saturday, and then on Sunday we'll see snowfall in the morning, and then temperatures will start to turn that rain into some snow. We'll see that snowfall start to move 
into the region around 11 o'clock on Thursday and then on Friday we'll see it throughout the morning should end about 8 a.m. and then we'll start to see that snow start to dissipate throughout the day and then it should return on Saturday in the morning. Taking a look at temperatures over the next seven days 35 degrees expected on Thursday that'll jump to 36 degrees on Friday and then temperatures will jump to the average of 40 degrees on Saturday and Sunday but then a cold front will move in after those storms dropping temperatures to 33 degrees on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Kind of warming up before we dip right back down. Yeah, temperatures will start to warm up, but then we have a cold front moving in after those storms. That's what's going to drop those temperatures as some Arctic air moves into the region. So prepare yourselves now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. And taking a live look out there this morning, you can see everything looking nice and calm. Traffic moving along smoothly and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And let's take a quick look at gas prices this morning. Averages continuing their downward trend. Idaho now at $3.88 a gallon, down 16 cents from just a week ago. Still, that's about 55 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up going to be Costco. You can get it there for $3.69 a gallon. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, more classi classified documents found in the possession of former president. A look at the latest on the search. Plus time running out for Congress. A look at the spending bill they're trying to pass before it's too late. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 75% of house guests say they feel compelled to do this when staying the night. That answer, and very generous, waking up as the same time as your hosts. A lot of good guesses though. All right, for today's question, about a third of people say they tried to do this before going out to dinner. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across Gem State over in Emmett. 35 degrees today with partly cloudy skies. That'll drop to 29 degrees as the snow moves in. And then tomorrow they can expect snow showers with a high of 35 degrees over in Emmett. Moving to McCall, 27 degrees and mostly cloudy skies expected today. That'll drop to 19 degrees as some snow showers moves in. And then tomorrow they can expect snow as well in McCall with a high of 27 degrees. Thank you, Vasily. Well, CBS News has learned at least two more documents with classified markings were found at a storage site in Florida used by former President Donald Trump. Trump's legal team oversaw the latest search at the direction of a federal judge. Jared Hill reports from New York. The Justice Department's hunt for classified government documents possibly removed from the White House by Donald Trump is picking up steam. A U.S. official confirmed to CBS News that representatives for the former president alerted the FBI that they recovered two items with classified markings at a storage facility in Florida. The official confirmed the items were inside a sealed box. The disregard and disdain for legal norms and rules simply cannot be accepted from anyone. No one is above the law. The new discovery comes just months after federal agents confiscated more than 300 classified documents at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Yet another instance in which Trump has failed to comply with lawful demands to return them. Trump's legal team oversaw the latest search for papers at the direction of a federal judge to ensure they were properly complying with a subpoena issued earlier this year. The locations they examined included the president's golf club at Bedminster, New Jersey, Trump Tower in New York, and the storage facility in Florida. The first question now is, is the Department of Justice satisfied they have everything? If they don't, how are they going to get the rest? A spokesperson for the former president says, quote, Trump and his counsel continue to be cooperative and transparent, despite the unprecedented illegal and unwarranted attacks against him. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. The Justice Department recently appointed a special counsel, Jack Smith, to head up the agency's investigations into the documents found at Mar-a-Lago. 
Well, looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, a pretty view of that. The House expected to pass the Respect for Marriage Act later today, sending the bill to President Biden's desk for his signature. Now, the Senate passed that measure last month on a bipartisan vote. The legislation giving federal protections for same-sex and interracial couples. Well, time running out for Congress to pass two massive spending bills. The House was expected to take up the National Defense Authorization Act this week. But Republicans say their support hinging on ending the military vaccine mandate. Meanwhile, funding for the broader federal government could expire as of next week. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says the country may have to settle for a short-term bill that lasts just into the new year. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. Well, the Great Idaho Food Drive is wrapping things up tomorrow, December 9th. Food insecurity is at an all-time high this year. These are tough times for people and families and friends, and we just want to be there to help as much as we can. According to the Idaho Food Bank, Idaho sees close to 153,000 people become food insecure each year. Idaho sees a 10% child food insecurity rate, something Les Schwab's Bill Page says can be alleviated. Today, too many kids go hungry, and so with the help of you um, and the, this great uh, Treasure Valley, we'd like to just continue our support, and uh, we are extremely grateful for all the outstanding donations we've had. We have a list of the drop-off spots and where you can get food if you're in need on IdahoNews.com. You can also donate cash or a single dollar can feed up to a family of four. And if you donate right now, Corwin Ford will match it, doubling your donation. We have a link to do that on our website, IdahoNews.com. Yeah, trying to keep people fed as we head into the holidays and the other thing, keeping people warm because it yeah. is chilly out there this morning. This yeah, morning. it's going to be chilly and we're going to see some snowfall not only in the mountains but here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. So definitely feeling like the winter time here in southern Idaho. Taking a look outside right now in Boise, 21 degrees out right now, but take a look at that feels like temperature with that wind dropping the wind chill down to feels like 13 degrees outside right now. A very very chilly morning here in the Treasure Valley. Now taking a look at the next couple of days, we will have some snow late tonight and into tomorrow. We're going to have those snow showers on Friday. And then another storm is set to move into the region Saturday and make sure you're aware of those slick roads that we're going to see tomorrow morning and over the weekend as well. That snowfall is going to cause some slick roads out there. Now we are going to see about one to three inches of snowfall on Friday. That's going to be about three to five inches of snowfall over in the West Central Mountains and it is going to be heavier over in the Central Mountains as well. And then as we move into the weekend, we are going to see even more snowfall over in the mountains. The snow Snowfall is looking like the heaviest on Saturday over in the mountains, and then we're going to see the heaviest of snowfall on Friday here in the Treasure Valley. We will see some more snowfall on Saturday and Sunday, but it will be lighter on Saturday and Sunday. Now taking a look at the seven day forecast, we're going to see that rain snow mix on Saturday as temperatures jump up to 40 degrees, and then we'll see some periods of snow, especially in the mornings on Sunday, but then a cold front will move in, dropping temperatures early next week. Temperatures will drop to 33 degrees on Monday, 27 on Tuesday, and 20 five degrees on Wednesday in the Treasure Valley. So chilly temperatures ahead for us here in the Treasure Valley and then moving over to the mountains. We're going to see snowfall for much of the weekend. 27 on Friday, 32 on Saturday and 34 degrees expected on Sunday. Then temperatures will start to drop in the mountains as well. 30 degrees on Monday, 26 on Tuesday and 23 on Wednesday. Take a look at those no lows. Nine degrees on Tuesday morning and five degrees on Wednesday morning. It's chilly, chilly weather ahead over the mountains. Yeah, and now that fog has mm -hmm. moved out, but something we need to keep an eye out on is that snow that yeah. will hit soon. Really going to cause some slick roads tomorrow morning, so be aware of that when you get out in the roads. We're going to see some freezing early in the mornings, and that could turn into some slush later as that snow continues to fall throughout the morning. Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye out on. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long and taking a look out there. Everything looking nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down this morning. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, how would you rate your personal finances? For today's number of the day, 38% of voters say theirs is excellent or good. A Scott Rasmussen National Survey finds a whopping 60% rated as fair or poor. 
The survey indicates less than a fourth of voters say their personal finances are getting better. Meanwhile, 44% say they're getting worse. Roughly a third say their finances are staying about the same. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, if you've been binging on the sweet stuff, you're not alone. The new study explaining the science behind your sweet tooth. And later, the lights back on in North Carolina following a domestic energy attack. What we know and how neighbors are reacting this morning. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 524. Welcome back. Binging on too many sweets may not be all your fault. A new study showing the urge to splurge may be controlled by certain bacteria inside of your body. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains how. Hey there, everybody. This new study shows those sweet treats might be the result of what's going on in your gut. When most of us think of our guts, we think of the kind we want to get to go away with weight loss and exercise. Something many of us have struggled with, according to fitness specialists, since we've had so much sit time since the pandemic began. Maybe they didn't know what to do at home, um, and so now they're coming to the gym saying, okay, help me, you know, I, I gained the COVID-19. But a new study just released in Current Biology shows, especially if eating sweets is your thing, it might be because your gut is actually lacking in something. Lab experiments say that it could lead you to binge on certain foods. They call these foods palatable foods. They're foods we consume for pleasure. Researchers found the absence of certain gut bacteria they call microbiota leads to an increase in sweet eating. Mice ate 50% more sugary pellets and ate them for longer periods of time when they didn't have these good gut bacteria. The bacteria can be knocked out by certain medications such as antibiotics and replaced with certain foods such as probiotics found in yogurt. Future studies are now planned to continue to explore how to work with these reward circuits in the brain and how we might develop new treatments to intervene. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, Walgreens is launching a free home delivery program for the COVID-19 oral antiviral therapy drug Paxlovid in partnership with DoorDash and Uber Health and available to those with a prescription. It's in response to the White House's call for pharmacies to help make winter healthier for Americans. This comes as COVID-19 hospitalizations are on the rise nationwide. In the coming weeks, Walgreens also plans to expand its home delivery service to include HIV treatment. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Idaho's largest toy drive is over. A look at the results and a big thank you from us here at CBS 2. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Of course, after all of your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question, about a third of people say they're trying to do this before going out to dinner. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, vigils held overnight honoring lives lost to gun violence. A look at the events here in Idaho and across the nation. Plus, investigators need your help as they look into the Moscow murders, what they want you to keep an eye out for. Plus, more classified documents found in the possession of a former president. A look at the latest on the search. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now.
Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful morning. When you take a look outside, we'll see some cloud cover here in Boise, but we're not seeing any of that fog that we saw yesterday. The visibility has cleared up and it's making that morning commute much easier than it was the past two days. Now, temperatures much colder. However, 21 degrees at 6 a.m. That'll jump up to 22 degrees around 7 a.m. and it'll lead to 22 degrees around 8 a.m. Now, we do have a wind chill right now, dropping that feels like temperature into the teens. So definitely wear a jacket when you head out the door this morning. 23 degrees expected at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 29 degrees around noon. So we won't jump into the 30s till the afternoon. 34 to 35 degrees expected to be the high today. And then we'll drop down to 31 degrees around 6 p.m. Now we do have a winter weather advisory in effect starting at 5 p.m. tonight and it will last till about 11 a.m. on Friday. We can expect about one to three inches of snow Friday morning and three to six inches of snow over in the West Central Mountains. So some snowfall headed our way here in southwestern Idaho. Now taking a look at temperatures, 35 degrees in Boise, 36 in Mountain Home, 35 in Nampa, and 32 degrees over in Emmett. 34 degrees going to be the high over in Caldwell today and 29 degrees over in Ontario. A little bit chillier over in east, eastern Oregon. And then up in the mountains, 27 in Sun Valley, 33 in Idaho City, and 26 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And at this 530 hour, starting to gradually see some more cars out there. But as you can see, everything moving along nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car and start your day, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Vigils being held across the nation overnight for victims of gun violence. CBS 2's Michaela Elich takes a local look at the growing movement. People lit up the night sky, holding candles and honoring all those affected by gun violence. This was the first time the Boise vigil was ever led by all survivors. One of them being Andrew Rose. Immediately it just shattered our, our, uh, our whole world. Um, it was just, it was traumatizing in a way that is, is hard to explain if you haven't lived it. Andrew lost his brother nearly nine years ago. Yeah, a lot of good memories from this trip. Now he hopes to share his brother's story. Instead, I put it under a light and I looked at it and I acknowledged the grief and I embraced it. Um, and ever since then, I've been embracing my grief by, by telling my story and Ben's story to whoever will listen, basically. Whether it be survivors, victims, family members, or just those that want to show their support, the event hopes to bring everyone together. A lot of people think you had to have been shot, and it's not that at all. It can be someone who ran and hid for their life. They've been threatened with a gun. Um, they knew someone they loved and cared for was shot and killed or took their life. That makes you a survivor of gun violence. So we want to reach out to people and let them know they're not alone. There are people here in the community. We care and they have access to help. Now, if you or someone you know is a survivor of gun violence, there are local resources available. All you have to do is text the word survivor to the number on your screen. That's 64433. A week from today will mark the 10 years since I survived the same Coke school shooting. The nation's capital also holding a vigil for victims of gun violence. The event organized by the Newtown Action Alliance memorializing the Sandy Hook shooting. The president attending that vigil, there he renewed his call for Congress to pass stricter gun reform. Earlier this year, Congress did pass the most significant firearm reforms in nearly three decades following the massacres in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. Now that move enhances background checks, boosts social or pardon me, boosts school security and helps develop red flag laws, among other measures. Lawmakers acknowledging, though, more restrictions are unlikely in the near future, with Republicans about to take control of the House while Democrats retain the majority in the Senate. Well, in Moscow, investigators say they need the community's help piecing together what happened before four University of Idaho students were murdered. Now, police are now looking for a 2011-2013 Hyundai Elantra. They think whoever was in the car was sitting outside the apartment as the murders happened. They may have more information. Now, investigators also want any pictures or videos from the fraternity where two of the victims were hours before their deaths. Now, it's been nearly a month since the four students were killed. Are you concerned that too much time has passed before you've made an arrest? 
Absolutely not. This case is ongoing. Uh, we still have the same amount of resources, if not more. Yesterday, police took some of the items out of the apartment where those students were killed. They say they do not have the murder weapon yet. If you do know anything, you can call or email the tip line. We have both of those for you on our website. That's IdahoNews.com. Turning to developing news, at least two more classified documents have been found in possession of former President Donald Trump. His lawyers say they discovered the material while searching a storage unit in West Palm Beach, Florida, after a federal judge pressed the Trump legal team to ensure all documents had been handed over to the FBI. The Washington Post reports that no class classified material was found in additional searches of Trump Tower in New York and his golf club in New Jersey. While well, Apple is announcing plans to encrypt more data that users store on its iCloud servers, including full backups, photos, and notes. Security advocates welcome the move, but law enforcement agencies worry they could run into more issues when it comes to unlocking devices for investigations. In a statement, the FBI says such measures hinder their ability to protect Americans from crimes ranging from cyber attacks to violence against children and terrorism. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires, and Bronco Motors. Well, Idaho's largest toy drive, it's over, folks. And the final numbers showing just how amazing our community is. So thank you from everyone involved here at CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, as well as our partners. Now in all, you, the community, donated over 15,000 toys, filling more than four semi-trailers. You also donated more than $45,000. Yeah, we truly can't thank you enough for helping us, trying to give every child here in the Treasure Valley a gift this holiday season. And hey, if you wanna give someone a smile this holiday, there's another way you can do it. The Meridian Senior Center asking for Christmas cards from kids. They'll be given to their seniors next week during their holiday lunch. Cards, they can be dropped off at the Meridian Senior Center. That's located at 1920 North Records Way. That's southeast in the southeast corner of Kleiner Park. Now the Senior Center hoping to collect all of those cards by Monday. Love it. Lots of ways to spread cheer this year. Yes, yeah, such a heartwarming way to give back this holiday season. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. No, definitely. Well, I guess our focus this morning is what's heading our way, which mm -hmm. is a storm system. Yeah. And is it still looking like it'll um, head into the into the weekend for us as well? Yeah, we're going to see snowfall throughout the weekend, starting Friday morning, and then we're going to see a rain snow mix on Saturday with some periods of snow on Sunday morning. Now, some of that precipitation will turn to rain due to the higher temperatures that we are going to see this weekend. But taking a look at today, we are seeing a calm before the storm, partly cloudy skies expected today. But colder temperatures, 23 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 27 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 35 degrees around 3 p.m. And as I said, we're going to see partly cloudy skies throughout the day today. But take a look at this live picture we were seeing yesterday. This area blanketed with low clouds. Now we're starting to see that clear up as that fog moves out of the region and that inversion is starting to weaken a little bit. 21 degrees in Boise, 21 Mountain Home right now, 27 over in Caldwell this morning and 25 degrees over in Ontario. 15 degrees in Twin Falls this morning and 9 degrees over in Sun Valley. Taking a look at the chances of precipitation over the next couple of days, we're likely to see precipitation start late Thursday night and into Friday morning. Now it'll last throughout the morning on Friday, and then we'll see the precipitation start to lighten up a little bit as we head into Friday evening. And then Saturday, we're going to see a rain snow mix here in the Treasure Valley. And Sunday, we'll also see some periods of snow, especially in the morning. Now that snowfall will make its way into the region Friday morning and it'll last till about 7 or 8 a.m. Then we'll see a break in that snowfall and then we'll see some more snowfall return to the region on Saturday morning. Taking a look at temperatures, 35 degrees today. That'll jump up to 36 degrees on Friday. Then we'll actually jump up to average on Saturday and Sunday. 40 degrees expected on Saturday and Sunday. But after those storms move in, we are going to see some cold front move in that's going to drop temperatures to 33 degrees on Monday. So some chillier temperatures headed our way here in the Treasure Valley. Nice to see that fog mm -hmm. out of our yeah. forecast now, but snow mm -hmm. heading our way. So. Yeah, so snow heading our way. That's going to complicate the morning commute tomorrow. Yeah. But we have a break from all those different things complicating our morning commutes after the past couple days of fog and some future days of snow. Good to hear. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there this 
Thursday morning, everything looking nice and smooth. Starting to see some more headlights, but everything moving along freely. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And let's take a quick look at gas prices this morning. Averages continuing their downward trend. Idaho is now at 388 a gallon, down 16 cents from just a week ago, but still that's about 55 cents higher than the national average. And according to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up going to be Costco. You can get it for 369 a gallon there. All right, it's time for our favorite part of the morning. It's question of the day. About a third of people say they try to do this before going out to dinner. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking read the reviews of the restaurant. I know a lot of people do that before they go into it, but I don't think it's everybody. What about you? I like that. We also talked a little bit about reading the menu before mm -hmm. too. I definitely do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I've never been there before, I absolutely look up the menu <laughs> before I go just to get an idea. But I do like reading reviews because you can also look at pictures that people have yeah, posted 100%. of the food. I know. Okay. Let's see what folks have to say. Joni says skipping your lunch. Oh yeah. That's, making some room. Yeah. yeah that's say, if it's a great place, yeah, yeah. you want to make a room. Yeah. Enjoy it. That's another thing we kind of talked about earlier. Avoiding yeah. snacking before. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. hard. All right. Paula says dressing nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dressing up a little bit. Special occasion, going out to dinner. I like it. Anita, oh, Ooh, says making really reservations. Yeah. Yep. A lot of people will just walk in, but making reservations, I could see a lot of people doing that too. See, yeah. and the one thing we forgot about. So I like yeah. this. I mm -hmm. like that answer, Anita. All right. If you think you know the answer, of course, you have an hour and 15 minutes to get your guesses in. And you can do that by heading to our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Oregon officials reporting their power infrastructure is under attack. The concerning discovery as the security of power substations is coming into question. CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the gym. Stay over in Weezer, 33 degrees and mostly cloudy skies expected today. That'll drop to 25 degrees overnight as some snow moves in. Then tomorrow, 35 degrees and snow showers expected over in Weezer. Moving to Council, 31 degrees and mostly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 24 degrees overnight as that snow moves in. And then tomorrow, 32 degrees and snow showers expected in Council. Thank you, Vasily. Well, two Portland area power substations are attacked and damaged. Now, Portland General Electric and the Bonneville Power Administration says someone attacked separate substations in Clackamas County. That's near Portland. Now, the utilities have not shared specific details of that attack, either of those attacks, but are revealing the attacks happened back in November around Thanksgiving. This compromises public safety um, in a lot of ways, and it's a very serious offense. Now, this comes as news after substations. They were attacked in North Carolina earlier this week, causing an out, out, ongoing power outage that has thousands of people that were in the dark and cold. Thankfully, the attacks in Oregon didn't cause any power outages. The Department of Homeland Security recently sending out a bulletin warning of increased threats of attacks on critical infrastructure. Now, they're assuring the public that those who attack power stations will be investigated thoroughly and brought to justice. And today marks the fifth day that many neighbors in North Carolina remain without power, but progress is being made and assistance is still available to those who need it. Cindy Bay shares stories of how this is disrupting lives. While all lights are back on for Duke Energy customers in Moore County, the day started like this. Hush puppies. Hush puppies. I want two. I want two of fried chicken. With people seeking a hot meal. We got cabbage, we got chicken, mac and cheese. Or a hot shower. It's a little vulnerable having to come ask about can I have a shower, can I have food? I'm, you know, it's kind of brings us back to this place of, I guess, being okay with reaching out to others. At Pinehurst Resort, power has been restored to the Carolina Hotel with the Holly Inn and the Manor planned to reopen Friday. But the past few days for Diane Castaldo in Southern Pines. It's horrible. I've never gone through something like this. I am handicapped. I use a walker. They told me they were eating sandwiches in the house. And Bob Allard packing the essentials. I have a, some neighbors there in their 80s and they're not getting out of the house. In fact, they're on a well so they don't have water. So 
I get water still, so I've been bringing over uh, um, water jugs so they can use their toilets. It's still an uphill battle for the community. I'm trying to get clear beer here. Railhouse Brewery scurrying to salvage what's left. The piece of equipment that we lost keeps the beer cold, and if the beer hits uh, about 55 degrees or so, maybe 60 degrees, then uh, there's some processes that take place that just destroy the beer, and we would be forced to dump all of it. The, the cool weather saved us. If it would have happened in the middle of the summer, then the temperature of the beer would have gone up rapidly, and we would have been forced to dump all of it. All right, well, we have a storm headed our way, mm -hmm. folks. Yeah, a storm headed our way. It's going to bring snowfall not only to our mountains, but here in the Treasure Valley, we are going to see a little bit of snowfall. About one to three inches are expected here in the Treasure Valley. Now, taking a look at temperatures right now, 21 degrees out here in Boise. We aren't seeing that fog that we saw for the past two days out, so the visibility has cleared up, but take a look at that feels like temperature. 13 degrees out right now is what it feels like. So that wind chill definitely drop in temperatures down. We're going to see some snowfall roll in late tonight, and then we'll see some AM morning snow showers here in the Treasure Valley on Friday. That's where we're expecting about one to three inches of snowfall. And then we have another storm headed our way Saturday and Sunday. Most of that snowfall will be over in the mountains. They'll get some heavier snowfall on Saturday and Sunday, as they also expect some snowfall on Friday. But here in the Treasure Valley, we'll see more of a rain snow mix on Saturday, and then we'll see some periods of snow on Sunday, but we should just get about an inch for those two storms combined. But do expect some slick roads this weekend. Now, taking a look at that snowfall, as I said, we'll get about one to three inches of snowfall on Friday. Then over in the mountains, they're expecting about three to five inches of snowfall, especially in Cascade and McCall. And then as we move on throughout the weekend, we're going to see some heavier snowfall over in the mountain areas. And then here in the Treasure Valley, we'll see just a little bit. We'll see that rain snow mix on Saturday, 40 degrees expected then here in the Treasure Valley and 40 on Sunday. But take a look at those colder temperatures early next week. 33 degrees expected on Monday, 27 on Tuesday and 25 degrees on Wednesday. That's due to a cold front moving in after those storms and then over in the mountains they can expect snowfall Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 32 degrees on Saturday and 34 degrees on Sunday. But take a look at those lower temperatures early next week. 30 degrees on Monday, 26 on Tuesday and 23 degrees on Wednesday. And five degrees for that overnight mm -hmm. low. That's yeah, temperatures dropping into the single digits once again. Last time it did that was about two weeks ago over in the mountains. So temperatures dropping after those storms move in due to that Arctic air moving into southwest Idaho. Yep, had a nice break from the single digit mm -hmm. overnight lows, but yep. they're headed back. Yep, especially over in those mountains. Yeah, thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there this morning, everything moving along nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, hospitals asking for help. How they're hoping to make Christmas a little brighter for kids who can't be home for the holidays. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 553. Welcome back. The Women's and Children's Alliance has $50,000 more to help people in the community. It's from JP Morgan Chase. Now they got it under the giving tree at Grove Plaza in Boise yesterday morning. The WCA is the only women's and children's organization in Boise. They help over 10,000 women and children each and every year who are in need of security, along with a place to stay and warm meals. Now, CEO Beatrice Black adds the support means so much this time of year because through the holiday, how hard the holidays can be for people rebuilding their lives within their programs. And hey, if you'd like to keep making a difference for kids ahead of the holidays, the Boise Bicycle Project needs some help. They need two to three hundred used bikes by the end of the week. Now they do have 575 kids. They're hoping to get a bike this year and they want help in making it happen. This holiday kids bike giveaway this year, we get all our kids through referral partners like social workers, counselors, pastors, nonprofit centers. And a lot of times that's just people in our area who need help. It's also newly arrived refugees from other countries such as the Ukraine or the Congo. And um, so we're so excited to have 575 people that we can give bikes to this season. So if you want to help, listen up. 
You can bring a bike of any size and condition to the Boise Bicycle Project. If you don't have a used one, they ask that you adopt a dream bike instead of buying a new one, saying that they can stretch the money a little further, fixing used bikes themselves. You can also volunteer to pick up bikes. You can find out how to jump in on IdahoNews.com. Well, thousands of children won't get a chance to celebrate the holidays at home with their families because they're undergoing intense medical treatment. But as Michael George reports, many hospitals now offer a way to help make their holidays a little brighter. Take a look. Jinx. Oh, my jinx. Eight-year-old Aiden Schaefer has spent a lot of time in hospitals. He was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of two. You can't imagine. Your whole world crumbles. There are words that you never want to hear that your child has cancer. Denise and Patrick Schaefer say spending the holidays in a hospital room with Aiden and his brother Mason can be especially tough. You try and do the best you can to make them feel normal. Meanwhile, as parents, we're crying inside, but you're making them happy so that they don't realize everything that's going on. Mount Sinai's Kravis Children's Hospital launched a donation wish list to help kids undergoing treatment. Anyone can go on their website and choose gifts to donate to young patients. Last year, the hospital received more than 2,000 toys, enough for parents to find just what their child wants. Caregivers don't have to run, worry about running out to the store, getting that it toy or getting that item that their child has been wishing for. It's a small gesture, but it can have a big impact, helping relieve the stress and anxiety children face in the hospital, especially during the holidays. Yeah. Director of Patient and Family-Centered Care Diane Rohde says many children's hospitals offer similar programs. Anyone in the country can check out their local children's hospital and look up the child life department in that hospital and learn the ways that they can be involved and engaged. Denise says the gifts have meant a lot to Aiden. Because of everything that Aiden's received, he wanted to be sent in the hospital himself. And he wanted to be able to give out presents to other kids because of how it made him feel. Donations that spread joy and help make a child's holiday wishes come true. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, more classified documents found in the possession of the former president. A look at the latest on the search. You're we'll watching CBS 2 News this morning. We have your latest headlines at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, vigils held overnight honoring lives lost to gun violence. A look at the events here in Idaho and across the nation. Plus, investigators need your help as they look into the Moscow murders, what they want you to keep an eye out for. Plus, Idaho's largest toy drive is over. A look at the results and a big thank you from us here at CBS 2. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look for you of downtown Boise on this Thursday. It's December 8th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And so nice to see mm -hmm. a clear view of downtown <laughs> Boise, but it's not going to look like that come tomorrow morning. Yeah, tomorrow morning we're going to wake up to some snow here in the Treasure Valley and across much of southwestern Idaho. The mountain's going to see some snow as well, but taking a look outside right now, we are just seeing some clouds over much of the Treasure Valley, especially over in up in the Cascade area. They are seeing some heavier clouds, but here in Boise, we're just seeing a few clouds here. We're going to see partly cloudy skies throughout the day today, but it is very chilly this morning. Taking a look outside, 6 at or 20 degrees right now. That'll jump up to 22 degrees around 7 a.m. and 22 degrees also expected at 8 a.m. Temperatures will jump up to 23 at 9 a.m. and we won't break 30 degrees at all this morning. 29 degrees expected at 
at noon. That'll jump all the way up to 34 degrees, which 34 to 35 degrees will be our high today, and then temperatures will drop down to 31 degrees at 6 p.m. But we do have a winter weather advisory that will jump into effect around 5 o'clock today and will extend till five, uh, 11 o'clock on Friday. We can expect some snowfall here in the Treasure Valley and over in the mountains. 35 degrees going to be the high today in Boise, 32 in Emmett, 34 in Caldwell, and 35 in Nampa, 36 degrees expected in Mountain Home, and up in the mountains, 26 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we start the 6 o'clock hour of your Thursday morning, everything running smoothly. As you can see, no traffic backups on your screen. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And vigils being held across the nation overnight for victims of gun violence. CBS 2's Michaela Elich taking a local look at the growing movement. People lit up the night sky holding candles and honoring all those affected by gun violence. This was the first time the Boise vigil was ever led by all survivors. One of them being Andrew Rose. Immediately it just shattered our, our, uh, our whole world. Um, it was just, it was traumatizing in a way that is, is hard to explain if you haven't lived it. Andrew lost his brother nearly nine years ago. Yeah, a lot of good memories from this trip. Now he hopes to share his brother's story. Instead, I put it under a light and I looked at it and I acknowledged the grief and I embraced it. Um, and ever since then, I've been embracing my grief by, by telling my story and Ben's story to whoever will listen, basically. Whether it be survivors, victims, family members, or just those that want to show their support, the event hopes to bring everyone together. A lot of people think you had to have been shot, and it's not that at all. It can be someone who ran and hid for their life. They've been threatened with a gun. Um, they knew someone they loved and cared for was shot and killed or took their life. That makes you a survivor of gun violence. So we want to reach out to people and let them know they're not alone. There are people here in the community. We care and they have access to help. Now, if you or someone you know is a survivor of gun violence, there are local resources available. All you have to do is text the word survivor to the number on your screen. That's 64433. A week from today will mark the 10 years since I survived the same post school shooting. The nation's capital holding a vigil for victims of gun violence as well. Now, the event was organized by the Newtown Action Alliance, memorializing the Sandy Hook shooting. The president attending the vigil, there he renewed his call for Congress to pass stricter gun reform. Now, earlier this year, Congress did pass the most significant firearm reforms in nearly three decades after the massacres in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. Now, this move enhances background checks, boosts school security, and helps develop red flag laws, among other moves. Lawmakers acknowledging, though, more restrictions are unlikely in the near future, with Republicans about to take control of the House, while Democrats retain the majority in the Senate. Well, now to the latest out of Moscow, Idaho. Investigators looking for a white Hyundai Elantra between 2011 and 2013. Now, they say the car was in the immediate area of the home where four college students were killed last month, and they want to speak to its occupants who may have critical information about the case. However, officials don't know the vehicle's license plate number. So if you do know anything about this vehicle, you can call or email the tip line. We have both of those on our website. That's IdahoNews.com. And turning to developing news, at least two more classified documents have been found in possession of former President Donald Trump. His lawyers say they discovered the material while searching a storage unit in West Palm Beach, Florida, after a federal judge pressed the Trump legal team to ensure that all documents had been handed over to the FBI. The Washington Post reports that no classified material was found in additional searches of Trump Tower in New York and his golf club in New Jersey. Now stay tuned, we'll take a close, closer look at the search for classified documents taken from the White House. For the latest, you can always head to IdahoNews.com. And Apple announcing plans to encrypt more data that users store on the iCloud servers, including full backups, photos, and notes. Security advocates welcome the move, but law enforcement agencies worry that they could run into more issues when it comes to unlocking devices 
needed for investigations. Now, in a statement, the FBI says such measures hinder their ability to protect Americans from crimes ranging from cyber attacks to violence against children and terrorism. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires, and Bronco Motors. Well, Idaho's largest toy drive, it's over, folks. And the final numbers showing just how amazing our community is. We want to say thank you from everyone here at CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, as well as our partners. Now, in all, you, the community, donated over 15,000 toys, filling more than four semi-truck trailers. You also donated more than $45,000. Yeah, we truly can't thank you enough for helping us try to give every child in the Treasure Valley a gift this holiday season. And hey, if you want to give someone a smile this holiday, you still have a chance. There's another way. The Meridian Senior Center, they're asking for Christmas cards from kids. They'll be given to their seniors next week during their holiday lunch. Now those cards, they can be dropped off at the Meridian Senior Center. That's located at 1920 North Records Way. That's the southeast corner of Kleiner Park. The Senior Center, hoping to collect all of those cards by Monday. I love it. A nice little uplift we all need. Keeps you warm in these cold, <laughs> in this oh, cold yeah. holiday yes. season. Yeah, yeah, it's already feeling real cold this holiday season, mm -hmm. and it's just going to get colder, especially early next week. We're going to see temperatures Ugh. drop real low after those storms. We'll get some cold Arctic air moving in, but as for this weekend, we are going to see some snowfall here in the Treasure Valley. Moving over to today, temperatures very low this morning. We're sitting at about 23 to 24 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 27 degrees around 11 a.m. So we won't break 30 at all this morning, jumping up to 31 degrees around 1 o'clock, leading to our high today of 35 degrees around 3 p.m. And we're going to see partly cloudy skies throughout much of the day today. But taking a light look at this live picture here of Bogus Basin yesterday, this whole area was blanketed by low clouds. Now today we are seeing those clouds starting to clear up just a little bit, leading to that fog moving out of the region. 20 degrees in Boise, 20 in Mountain Home, 27 in Caldwell, and 25 degrees degrees over in Ontario. Taking a look at the precipitation over the next couple of days, we're going to see those storms start to roll in Thursday night and into Friday morning. We'll see snowfall throughout much of the Treasure Valley and up in the mountains. And then Saturday and Sunday, we do expect some snowfall here in the Treasure Valley as well. It will be lighter on Saturday and on Sunday. That snow will be heavier over in the mountains. We can expect a rain snow mix on Saturday and then on Sunday we can expect some snow as well. Taking a look at future cast, we are going to see that snow start to roll in throughout the morning. And then we'll see it start to clear up around 11 a.m. Then snow will start to move back into the region on Saturday, and we can expect it on Saturday morning as well. Taking a look at temperatures, 35 degrees today. That'll jump up to 36 on Friday, and then we'll jump all the way up to our average of 40 degrees on Saturday and Sunday. That's why we'll see some of that rain or some of that snow turned into some rain throughout the day on Saturday and Sunday. And then temperatures will drop to 33 degrees on Monday as that cold front moves in. That just, I feel like that graphic shows the, mm -hmm. you know, roller coaster ride yeah. that we've been saying that we're on. Yeah, we're on a roller coaster <laughs> ride. Indeed, temperatures are going to jump up and then they'll drop real low. We're going to drop into the 20s on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Yeah, so grab your jackets, mm -hmm. grab your, you know, warm coats, oh, yeah. blankets, anything you can now to exactly. prepare for yeah. that. Exactly, yeah, going to need to warm up. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update on how our conditions are looking. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, free of the fog this morning. That's a relief. Don't have uh, fog. Uh, traffic moving fine. It's light traffic this time of the morning all the way around. You can see in some of the uh, camera shots there, freeway-wise. Uh, latest road closure area, though, due to a roundabout going in at Locust Grove Victory. That uh, oh, shut down sorry. as of yesterday officially all the way into February. So all four directions, Locust Grove, Victory. Nope, that uh, basically means no through traffic between Amity and Overland on Locust Grove and Victory between Meridian Road and Eagle Road. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. Important to keep in mind if you are heading that direction. And of course, when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Now let's take a quick look at gas prices this morning. Averages continuing their downward trend. Idaho now at $3.88 a gallon, down 16 cents from a week ago. But still, that's about 55 cents higher than the national average. And according to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up going to be Costco. You can get it for $3.69 a gallon there.
And we do have a CBS News special report concerning Russia and a, a prisoner swap with WNBA star Brittany Griner and convicted arms dealer Victor Bout. Again, you can find that special report on CBS 2 News. Well, straight ahead this morning, more classified documents found in possession of the former president. A look at the latest on the search. Plus, time is running out for Congress. A look at the spending bills they're trying to pass before it's too late. And don't forget about our question of the day, folks. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It was a hard one. 75% of House guests say they feel compelled to do this when staying the night. That answer is waking up the same time as their hosts. Love that. Now for today's question, about a third of people say they try to do this before going out to dinner. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecast across the gym. Stay over and pay it. 34 degrees and mostly cloudy skies expected today. That'll drop to 25 degrees overnight with some snow showers expected. And then tomorrow, snow showers with a high of 35 degrees expected over and pay it. Moving to Cascade, 27 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 18 degrees overnight. And then tomorrow, snow showers with a high of 27 degrees expected in pay or in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. CBS News has learned at least two more documents with classified markings were found at a storage site in Florida used by former President Donald Trump. Trump's legal team oversaw the latest search at the direction of a federal judge. Jared Hill reports from New York. The Justice Department's hunt for classified government documents possibly removed from the White House by Donald Trump is picking up steam. A U.S. official confirmed to CBS News that representatives for the former president alerted the FBI that they recovered two items with classified markings at a storage facility in Florida. The official confirmed the items were inside a sealed box. The disregard and disdain for legal norms and rules simply cannot be accepted from anyone. No one is above the law. The new discovery comes just months after federal agents confiscated more than 300 classified documents at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Yet another instance in which Trump has failed to comply with lawful demands to return them. Trump's legal team oversaw the latest search for papers at the direction of a federal judge to ensure they were properly complying with a subpoena issued earlier this year. The locations they examined included the president's golf club at Bedminster, New Jersey, Trump Tower in New York and the storage facility in Florida. The first question now is, is the Department of Justice satisfied they have everything? If they don't, how are they going to get the rest? A spokesperson for the former president says, quote, Trump and his counsel continue to be cooperative and transparent despite the unprecedented illegal and unwarranted attacks against him. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. The Justice Department recently appointed a special counsel, Jack Smith, to head up the agency's investigations into the documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the House is expected to pass the Respect for Marriage Act later today, sending that bill to President Biden's desk for his signature. Now, the Senate, they passed the measure last month on a bipartisan vote. The legislation giving federal protections for same-sex and interracial couples. Well, hey, time is running out for Congress to pass two massive spending bills. The House was expected to take up the National Defense Authorization Act this week, but Republicans say their support hinging on ending the military's vaccine mandate. Meanwhile, funding for the broader federal government could expire as of next week. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell saying the country may have to settle for a short-term bill that lasts just into the new year. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. Well, the Great Idaho Food Drive wrapping things up tomorrow, December 9th. Food insecurity is still at an all-time high this year. These are tough times for people and families and friends, and we just want to be there to help as much as we can. Now, according to the Idaho Food Bank, Idaho sees close to 153,000 people become food insecure each year. Idaho sees a 10% child food insecurity rate, something Les Schwab's bill page says can be alleviated. We have a list of the drop-off spots and where you can get food if you are in need on IdahoNews.com. And we have a link to donate cash as well on our website, IdahoNews.com. 
Love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. every dollar can provide up to four meals, which is so great yes. considering, you know, with inflation, being able to still keep that dollar amount mm -hmm. low. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Love that. All right, well, let's switch to weather because yeah, it is cold out there. You said mm -hmm. low 20s yeah. earlier. Low 20s this morning. We're mm -hmm. sitting there, we're sitting at just about 20 degrees right now, and we'll jump up to 22 degrees around <laughs> 7 a.m. So a very chilly day here in the Treasure Valley, especially this morning. As I said, 20 degrees outside right now. But take a look at that feels like temperature. 13 degrees out. Now we do have a southern southeasterly wind of about five miles per hour, but is still very chilly outside right now. And we're going to stay chilly tomorrow morning as well. We have some snow headed our way late tonight, and that'll carry over into Friday morning. Friday morning, we can expect about one to three inches of snowfall here in the Treasure Valley. So be aware of that as you get out on the roads, because we are going to have some slick roads, not only this weekend, but on Friday as well. Another storm is set to hit our region Saturday and Sunday. So be aware of that. We do have some precipitation on the way. Now we're going to see about one to three inches here in Boise. As I said, over in the West Central Mountains, they're going to see about three to five inches of snow on Friday. And then over in the mountains, they'll continue to get some more snowfall on Saturday and Sunday here in Boise. We're going to see that snow turn into some rain throughout the days, but we are going to see some snowfall in the mornings on Saturday and Sunday. Taking a look at the seven day forecast, 36 degrees expected tomorrow. That'll jump up to 40 degrees on Saturday and 40 degrees degrees on Sunday. That's why we're going to see that snow turn into some rain, but then we're going to have a cold front move into the region. That's going to drop temperatures early next week. 35 degrees expected on Monday, 27 degrees expected on Tuesday and 25 degrees expected on Wednesday in the Treasure Valley. Moving over to the mountains, they can expect snowfall throughout the weekend. 27 on Friday. The snow will get heavier on Saturday and then we'll start to lighten up on Sunday. 34 degrees expected on Sunday and then we'll expect a cold front to move into the mountains as well, dropping temperatures to 30 degrees on Monday. 26 degrees on Tuesday and 23 degrees on Wednesday and take a look at those lows 9 degrees Tuesday morning and 5 degrees Wednesday morning lows dropping into the single digits over in the mountains early next week and looking very clear mm -hmm. out there today, but tomorrow going to be a very different yeah. picture. Very different story tomorrow. We're going to see some snow out on the roads and that could turn into some slush at times and could freeze at some points as well. So be aware of that as you get out on the roads tomorrow. But today we do get a break from a lot of the different things affecting those morning commutes. Yeah, good to hear. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update this morning. We are doing just fine. 84 east and west of Boise. Speed's good. You can see in some of the camera shots, volume hasn't uh, increased too much yet. That'll start to kick in more so after about 6.30 and especially 7 o'clock hour for the rush. Uh, good to go. Even non-freeway routes running light. Eagle Road, Fairview, all quiet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, if you've been binging on the sweet stuff, you're not alone. The new study explaining the science behind your sweet tooth. And later, the lights back on in North Carolina following a domestic energy attack. What we know and how neighbors are reacting this morning. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 624. Welcome back. Binging on too many sweets, it may not all be your fault. Now, a new study showing the urge to splurge may actually be controlled by certain body bacteria. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains how. Hey there, everybody. This new study shows those sweet treats might be the result of what's going on in your gut. When most of us think of our guts, we think of the kind we want to get to go away with weight loss and exercise, something many of us have struggled with, according to fitness specialists, since we've had so much sit time since the pandemic began. Maybe they didn't know what to do at home, um, and so now they're coming to the gym saying, okay, help me, you know, I, I gained the COVID-19. But a new study just released in Current Biology shows, especially if eating sweets is your thing, it might be because your gut is actually lacking in something. Lab experiments say that it could lead you to binge on certain foods. They call these foods palatable foods. They're foods we consume for pleasure. Researchers found the absence of certain gut bacteria they call microbiota leads to an increase in sweet eating. 
Mice ate 50% more sugary pellets and ate them for longer periods of time when they didn't have these good gut bacteria. The bacteria can be knocked out by certain medications such as antibiotics and replaced with certain foods such as probiotics found in yogurt. Future studies are now planned to continue to explore how to work with these reward circuits in the brain and how we might develop new treatments to intervene. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. now back to you. Well, Walgreens is launching a free home delivery program for the COVID-19 oral antiviral therapy drug Paxlovid in partnership with both DoorDash and Uber Health and available to those with a prescription. It's in response to the White House's call for pharmacies to help make winter healthier for Americans. This comes as COVID-19 hospitalizations are on the rise nationwide. Coming up on CBS2 News, Idaho's largest toy drive is over. A look at the results and a big thank you from us here at CBS2. And here's a look at your primetime lineup. Of course, after all your favorites, join us for CBS2 News at 10 o'clock. Hey, and don't forget about our question of the day. That question, about a third of people say they try to do this before going out to dinner. All right, what is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS2 News, vigils held overnight to honor lives lost to gun violence. A look at the events here in Idaho and across the nation. Plus, investigators need your help as they look into the Moscow murders, what they want you to keep an eye out for. And more classified documents found in possession of the former president. A look at the latest on the search. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and happy Thursday, everybody. Right now across the Treasure Valley, we are seeing some cloud cover, especially over in the Ontario area. Here in Boise, the cloud cover a little bit lighter, but we are seeing that fog moving out of the region. So we aren't seeing any fog today like we were seeing the past couple of days, but we are seeing colder temperatures. Temperatures at 22 degrees at 7 a.m. and they'll stay at 22 degrees at 8 a.m. And we're not gonna break 30 throughout much of the morning. 23 degrees expected at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 29 degrees around noon. Leading to our high today of 34 to 35 degrees around 3 p.m. and then we'll drop to 31 degrees around 6 p.m. Now we do have a winter weather advisory that will be in effect at 5 p.m. tonight and it'll last till 11 a.m. on Friday morning. We're going to see about one to three inches of snowfall here in the Treasure Valley and over in the West Central Mountains. They can expect about three to five inches of snowfall tomorrow morning. So we do have some snowfall headed our way here in the Treasure Valley and to our friends over in the mountains. 35 in Boise, 32 in Emmett and up in the mountains. 26 in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Thursday morning, you can see lots more headlights out there. Starting to see some brake lights in that I-84 Cloverdale area, but not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Vigils held across the nation overnight for victims of gun violence. CBS 2's Michaela Elich takes a local look at the growing movement. People lit up the night sky holding candles and honoring all those affected by gun violence. This was the first time the Boise vigil was ever led by all survivors. One of them being Andrew Rose. Immediately it just shattered our, our, uh, our whole world. Um, it was just, it was traumatizing in a way that is, is hard to explain if you haven't lived it. Andrew lost his brother nearly nine years ago. Yeah, a lot of good memories from this trip. Now he hopes to share his brother's story. Instead, I put it under a light and I looked at it and I acknowledged the grief and I embraced it. Um, and ever since then, I've been embracing my grief by, by telling my story and Ben's story to whoever will listen, basically. Whether it be survivors, victims, family members, or just those that want to show their support, the event hopes to bring everyone together. A lot of people think you had to have been shot, and it's not that at all. It can be someone who ran and hid for their life. They've been threatened with a gun. Um, they knew someone they loved and cared for was shot and killed or took their life. 
that makes you a survivor of gun violence. So we want to reach out to people and let them know they're not alone. There are people here in the community. We care and they have access to help. Now, if you or someone you know is a survivor of gun violence, there are local resources available. All you have to do is text the word survivor to the number on your screen. That's 64433. A week from today will mark the 10 years since I survived the same post school shooting. The nation's capital also holding a vigil for victims of gun violence. The event organized by the Newtown Action Alliance memorializing the Sandy Hook shooting. The president attending the vigil there, he renewed his calls for Congress to pass stricter gun reform. Earlier this year, Congress did pass the most significant firearm reforms in nearly three decades. That's after the massacres in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. They enhance background checks, boost school security and help develop red flag laws, among other measures. Lawmakers acknowledging, though, more restrictions are unlikely in the near future with Republicans about to take control of the House while Democrats retain the majority in the Senate. Well, now to Moscow, investigators say they need the community's help piecing together what happened before four Idaho students were murdered. Police looking for a 2011-2013 white Hyundai Elantra. They think whoever was in the car was outside the apartment when the murders happened, and they may have more information. Investigators also wanting any pictures or videos from the fraternity house where two of the victims were hours before their deaths. It's been nearly a month since the four students were killed. Are you concerned that too much time has passed before you've made an arrest? Absolutely not. This case is ongoing. Uh, we still have the same amount of resources, if not more. Police took some items out of the apartment where the students were killed yesterday. They say they do not have the murder weapon yet. If you do know anything, you can call or email the tip line. We have both of those for you on our website, IdahoNews.com. And turning now to developing news, at least two more classified documents have been found in possession of former President Donald Trump. His lawyers say they discovered the material while searching a storage unit in West Palm Beach, Florida, after a federal judge pressed the Trump legal team to ensure that all documents had been handed over to the FBI. The Washington Post reports that no classified material was found in additional searches of the Trump Tower in New York and his golf club in New Jersey. And WNBA star Brittany Griner is being released in a prisoner swap with Russia. It's in exchange for Russian arms dealer Victor Bout. Sources tell CBS News the high stakes swap happened this morning at a neutral location in the United Arab Emirates that both the U.S. and Russia had agreed on. She will now undergo a health check at the United States military base before returning to the U.S. You can find more information on IdahoNews.com. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires, and Bronco Motors. Idaho's largest toy drive, it's over, folks. And the final numbers showing just how amazing our community is. We want to say thank you from everyone involved here at CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, as well as our partners. In all, you, the community, donated over 15,000 toys, filling more than four semi-trailers. You also donated more than $45,000. Wow, we truly can't thank you enough for helping us and trying to give every child in the Treasure Valley a gift this holiday season. And hey, if you want to give someone a smile this holiday, there's another way to do it. The Meridian Senior Center, they're asking for Christmas cards from children. They'll be given to seniors next week during their holiday lunch. Now, cards can be dropped off at the Meridian Senior Center. That's at 1920 North Records Way. That's the southeast corner of Kleiner Park in Meridian. The Senior Center, hoping to collect all the cards by Monday. What a great way to give back this holiday season. Yeah, spread some yes. cheer. It'll help keep you warm because, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right now you need something to keep you warm. Because, oh, yeah. Vasily, it is darn cold outside. Mm -hmm. There's a little breeze out there, too. Yep. I forgot about that mm -hmm. when the inversion lifts. Yeah. But, yeah, it's feeling biting this morning. Oh, yeah, it's super yeah. cold out there. The feels like temperature in the teens right now, about 14 degrees is that feels like temperature. When you head out the door this morning, you'll feel those cold temperatures, 23 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 27 degrees around 11 a.m., leading to our high today of 35 degrees around 3 p.m. We're going to see partly cloudy skies throughout the day today, but we do have some snow 
on the way tomorrow. Taking a look outside right now of Bogus Basin, and you can see much of the Treasure Valley yesterday was covered by a bunch of low clouds. Now today we're seeing those clouds clearing up, and that's why we're not seeing that visibility hindered like it was yesterday. 20 degrees in Boise right now, 20 degrees in Mountain Home, 27 over in Caldwell, and 25 degrees in Ontario. Up in the mountains, 7 degrees right now in Sun Valley, and take a look at that. Negative 4 degrees over in Stanley. However, Stanley does see some of the coldest temperatures in the entire West Coast. Taking a look at the chances of precipitation over the coming days. We're likely to see some precipitation start Thursday night and it'll carry over throughout Friday morning till about 7 or 8 a.m. We'll see snowfall here in the Treasure Valley and then on Saturday and Sunday we'll see some rain and some snowfall as well. Most of that snowfall will be in the morning and it will turn to rain due to higher temperatures. Taking a look at Futurecast, we are going to see that snow start to move into the region around 11 p.m. Thursday night and into until about 7 a.m. on Saturday morning or on Friday morning. Taking a look at temperature 36 degrees expected tomorrow. That'll jump up to 40 degrees on Saturday and 40 degrees also expected on Sunday. But then we'll have a cold front move in that's going to drop temperatures to 33 degrees on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Yep, and clear skies today, mm -hmm. but going to see some snow on the ground starting tomorrow. Yeah, that snow is going to complicate the morning commute tomorrow, so be aware of that when you get out in the roads. We could see some slush and maybe some freezing as well. Something to prepare and be cautious. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update. And the rush starting to kick into gear, getting some slow traffic in the uh, merge areas uh, of Meridian, like 10 Mile Meridian Road. But getting in a slowdown as well, shortly after Eagle Road, you can see in the upper right-hand corner shot the Cloverdale camera. That is looking towards the east. Brake light's coming on. And may even have something off on the shoulder in that stretch between uh, Cloverdale and 5 Mile. So almost halfway between Eagle Road and 184. Do some checking, but uh, possibly something off on the shoulder going on there. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. All right, it's time for our question of the day. That question, about a third of people say they tried to do this before going out to dinner. Well, we had a ton of good guesses earlier, but I'm going to stick with my guess of reading reviews. What do you guys think? I like that one. I think I'm going to stick with you on that, Vasily. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's yeah. a good one. What about you, Ashley? I like looking up the menu, mm -hmm. but also that making a reservation guess from earlier. Mm, that was, that really was a really guess, good too. one, so I'm, I'm torn. Yeah, better safe than sorry sometimes. Yeah. Especially on Fridays or Saturdays. Oh. <laughs> Downtown Boise. All right. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what folks at home have to say. Kim says, oh, brushing your teeth. Oh. Yeah, freshen up before you go out. Totally yeah. Get that. A little self-care. All right. Wes says using the restroom. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, That's a good guess too. Didn't even think about that. Don't forget that. All right, Crystal says taking a shower. Yeah, taking care okay. of the hygiene before you go out to dinner. It's yeah. true. All right. Got to look good before you hit the town, I guess. All right. Yeah. Well, folks, we still have 15 minutes to get your guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, Oregon officials reporting their power infrastructure is under attack. The concerning discovery as the security of power substations comes into question. CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across Gem State over in Homedale. 32 degrees, mostly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 28 degrees overnight as some snow showers move in. And then tomorrow, they can expect some morning snow and then cloudy skies with a high of 36 degrees over in Homedale. Moving to Idaho City, 35 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 21 degrees overnight. And then tomorrow, snow showers with a high of 33 degrees in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. Well, two Portland area power substations are attacked and damaged. Now, Portland General Electric and the Bonneville Power Administration say someone attacked separate substations in Clackamas County. The utilities not shared, sharing specific details on either attack, but revealing the attacks happened back in November around Thanksgiving. And today marks the fifth day that many neighbors in North Carolina remain without power after substations there were attacked. But progress is being made and assistance is still available to those who need it. Cindy Bay shares stories of how this is disrupting lives. While all lights are back on for Duke Energy customers in Moore County, the day started like this. 
hush puppies? Hush puppies. How about two? How about two of fried chicken? With people seeking a hot meal. We got cabbage, we got chicken, mac and cheese. Or a hot shower. It's a little vulnerable having to come ask her, can I have a shower, can I have food? I'm, you know, it kind of brings us back to this place of, I guess, being okay with reaching out to others. At Pinehurst Resort, power has been restored to the Carolina Hotel with the Holly Inn and the Manor planned to reopen Friday. But the past few days for Diane Castaldo in Southern Pines... It's horrible. I've never gone through something like this. I am handicapped. I use a walker. They told me they were eating sandwiches in the house. And Bob Allard packing the essentials. I have a, some neighbors that are in their 80s and they're not getting out of the house. In fact, they're on a well so they don't have water. So. I get water still, so I've been bringing over uh, um, water jugs so they can use their toilets. It's still an uphill battle for the community. I'm trying to get clear beer here. Railhouse Brewery scurrying to salvage what's left. The piece of equipment that we lost keeps the beer cold, and if the beer hits uh, about 55 degrees or so, maybe 60 degrees, then uh, there's some processes that take place that just destroy the beer, and we, we would be forced to dump all of it. The, the cool weather saved us. If it would have happened in the middle of the summer, then the temperature of the beer would have gone up rapidly, and we would have been forced to dump all of it. Hmm. Wow. Don't want that. No, but no. Not at all. I love to see the community coming together for yeah. one another. I guess that's the one thing we can take from that is yeah. seeing, you know, them keeping each other warm, keeping them fed, mm -hmm. making sure they can still at least, you know, try to live their lives. So. Yeah. And speaking of keeping warm, yes. something we need to do here yeah. in mm -hmm. the Treasure Valley. Yeah, definitely turn up those heaters, especially this morning, because temperatures very low, 20 degrees out right now with a southeasterly wind of about five miles per hour. And so we do have some wind chill out there dropping that feels like temperature down to 13 degrees, a very chilly morning here in the Treasure Valley. Now taking a look outside, we are going to see snow later tonight, and then that's going to cause some snow showers Friday morning. We'll see snow showers throughout the morning, and then we have another storm on the way Saturday and Sunday. Day. That's going to cause some slick roads this weekend and on Friday. So be aware of that as you head out the door in the morning. Now, taking a look at the snowfall, we're going to see about one to three inches of snowfall on Friday here in the Treasure Valley. And then up in the West Central Mountains, they can expect about three to five inches of snowfall on Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, we're going to see heavier snowfall over in the mountains. The mountains could get up to eight inches at its peak here in the Treasure Valley. We're not going to see as much snowfall on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to see more of a snow in the morning and then a snow rain mix as it heads into the afternoons due to a higher temperature. Temperature is 40 degrees on Saturday and Sunday as the highs and those lows is where we'll see some snowfall over in the Treasure Valley. And then we're going to have a cold front moving into the region early next week. 33 degrees expected on Monday. Then we'll drop to 27 degrees on Tuesday and 25 degrees on Wednesday. So dropping way below the average after jumping up to the average over the weekend. And then taking a look at temperatures over in the mountains. 27 degrees expected tomorrow. That'll jump to 32 degrees on Saturday. Saturday and 34 degrees on Sunday. We'll see snowfall throughout the weekend over in the mountains and then we'll see a cold front move in dropping temperatures as well early next week. 30 degrees on Monday, 26 on Tuesday and 23 degrees on Wednesday in the mountains. Just a little bit of time left until those single digit overnight lows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over in the mountains and then yeah. here in the Treasure Valley, we'll see those lows drop into the teens. So we have some cold days ahead, but we will warm up a little bit, but that will be overshadowed by the snow we see this weekend. Well, something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. All right, thank you. Uh, building a little bit. We've had some of the slowdowns that tend to shift around a little bit. Can be crowded at those merge areas, of course, coming east on the freeway. And at times we've had some heavy traffic even away from Eagle Road partway to 184. But it doesn't appear there's uh, anything going on, at least not through that stretch right now. And again, driving conditions better this morning in general than we had yesterday east of, uh, well, east and west of the Ontario Caldwell area. We had some freezing fog yesterday that caused some problems. None of that uh, reported at this point this morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, hospitals asking for help. How they're hoping to make Christmas a little brighter for kids who can't be home for the holidays.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.53. Welcome back. If you'd like to keep making a difference for kids ahead of the holidays, the Boise, Boise Bicycle Project needs your help. They need to, to get two to 300 used bikes by the end of the week. They have 575 kids they're hoping to get a bike for this year, and they want to make it happen. This holiday kids bike giveaway this year, we get all our kids through referral partners like social workers, counselors, pastors, nonprofit centers, and a lot of times that's just people in our area who need help. It's also newly arrived refugees from other countries such as the Ukraine or the Congo. And um, so we're so excited to have 575 people that we can give bikes to this season. Now, if you'd like to help, you can bring a bike of any size and condition to the Boise Bicycle Project. If you don't have a used one to give them, they ask that you adopt a dream bike instead of buying a new one, saying they can stretch the money farther, fixing used bikes themselves. And if you can't donate but still want to help, you can volunteer to pick up bikes. Some people have them to give, but no way to get them to the Boise Bicycle Project. You can find out how by jumping on over to IdahoNews.com. Well, thousands of children won't get a chance to celebrate the holidays at home this year with their families because they're undergoing intense medical treatment. But as Michael George reports, many hospitals now offer a way to help make their holidays a little brighter. Take a look. Jinx. Oh, I jinxed you. Eight-year-old Aiden Schaefer has spent a lot of time in hospitals. He was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of two. You can't imagine. Your whole world crumbles. There are words that you never want to hear that your child has cancer. Denise and Patrick Schaefer say spending the holidays in a hospital room with Aiden and his brother Mason can be especially tough. You try and do the best you can to make them feel normal. Meanwhile, as parents, we're crying inside, but you're making them happy so that they don't realize everything that's going on. Mount Sinai's Kravis Children's Hospital launched a donation wish list to help kids undergoing treatment. Anyone can go on their website and choose gifts to donate to young patients. Last year, the hospital received more than 2,000 toys, enough for parents to find just what their child wants. Caregivers don't have to run, worry about running out to the store, getting that it toy or getting that item that their child has been wishing for. It's a small gesture, but it can have a big impact, helping relieve the stress and anxiety children face in the hospital, especially during the holidays. Director of Patient and Family-Centered Care Diane Rohde says many children's hospitals offer similar programs. Anyone in the country can check out their local children's hospital and look up the child life department in that hospital and learn the ways that they can be involved and engaged. Denise says the gifts have meant a lot to Aiden. Because of everything that Aiden's received, he wanted to be sent in the hospital himself and he wanted to be able to give out presents to other kids because of how it made him feel. Donations that spread joy and help make a child's holiday wishes come true. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Love that. All right, it's time for our question of the day. About a third of people say they try to do this before going out to dinner. What is it? The answer, check out the menu online. Oh, you got it, Ashley. Oh, nice. A must do. All right, folks, we'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.